So basically in induction motor, what we have seen that it is a single fin motor. On the stator, we have a polyphase binding. Normally, we have three phase machine because three phase is the most economic. So we have a distributed polyphase binding on the stator. On the rotor, we have a binding which is short circuited. It can be a cage binding which is short circuited on itself, or can be a regular <coughs> polyphase binding which is short circuited externally through slip pin. <coughs> now, this was the first figures we have considered. Say, this is the <coughs> direction of rotation of the rotating magnetic field because we have seen that when a polyphase binding is fed from a polyphase supply, it creates a rotating magnetic field with constant amplitude. The magnetic field at any instant of time is sinusoidally distributed across the air gap. But its magnetic axis rotates at a particular constant speed which depends on the supply frequency and the number of poles which we define as the synchronous speed. Now, <coughs> If this is a particular position of north and south, if we consider a two pole machine, a north and south pole, then accordingly EMFs will be induced in the conductor depending on the magnitude of flux it is linking. So these two conductors are lying in the maximum flux zone, so they will have maximum EMF. The rate of flux, uh, change of flux here is zero, so there is maximum EMF in these two. And these two will have zero EMF. And in between, the conductors will have different amount uh, magnitude, uh, different amounts of EMF depending on what is the amount of flux it is linking. So if we neglect the inductance, in that case, the current also will be coincident with the uh, in phase with the voltage. So in that case, this is these also uh, represent the current distribution. So this current and the <coughs> flux interact to produce a torque. Similarly, all the conductors, the current carrying uh, current current by the conductor and the uh, flux it is linking, which interact to produce a torque. All the torques are developed in the same direction. So we will have a net torque with uh, which will try to rotate the rotor in the direction of rotation of the magnetic field so that the cause of EMF induction, that is the speed difference between the rotating magnetic field and the uh, rotor conductor induces. So the rotor tries to catch up with the synchronous speed, but at synchronous, so it can never attain the synchronous speed because at synchronous speed, the speed, uh, rate of change of flux will be zero. So there will be no EMF induced in the conductor, so no torque produced. But however, our assumption uh, in assumption that the in, uh, inductance is negligible it is not valid because we have lots of amount of iron. This rotor core is iron, rotor core is iron, stator core is iron. So basically conductors are embedded in iron. So the windings will have considerable inductance. So basically the current will lag the voltage by the uh, by certain angle. Now, so this... Uh, figure still represents the EMFs, but the current distribution will be slightly different. That is, current is maximum in some other conductor, not in the conductor which is having the maximum EMF. So the effect will be that the torque, the torque is still developed, but the magnitude will reduce because the conductor which is carrying the maximum of current is no longer leaking the maximum flux. So the magnitude of the the effect of inductance will be the magnitude of the magnitude of the uh, torque will uh, decrease. Now we have also derived the, what is the uh, now uh, this was the quantities we have this, uh, defined. The, that uh, so 
what happens that initially when the rotor is at rest then the emf which is induced in the rotor conductor is at supply frequency but as the rotor gains speed so the relative speed between the rotating magnetic field and the rotor decreases so say the rotor is rotating at a speed n and the synchronous speed is ns so the relative speed is ns minus n so the effect will be that that uh, rotor emf magnitude will fall as well as the frequency will fall because the frequency will depend on the relative speed between the rotating magnetic field and the rotor conductor so as the rotor gains speed the magnitude of the emf induced will uh, decrease also the frequency will uh, fall so at a <coughs> Uh, steady state condition rotor will rotate at a speed say n which is given by ns uh, into 1 minus s where s is slip which is defined as ns minus i ns that is it is a pure number it is a uh, uh, ratio of the relative speed divided by the synchronous speed so from here we also see that it is also equal to f2 by n when f2 is the rotor frequency and f is the supply frequency so at any inst uh, instant when slip is s the rotor frequency will be s f2 so this s is very small at uh, no load it is as small as 1% that means 0.01 so no load speed is almost equal to the synchronous speed but as we load the machine the slip is increased slightly but a well designed synchronous mode machine normally has 4 to 5% uh, slip so slip is 0.04 to 0.05 approximate range so your second frequency is f is very low so nor under normal learning condition in the secondary the frequency is low that's why when we derive we will see that we neglect the core loss also because core loss is related to the pre supply frequency as the secondary frequency is uh, low so under running condition we neglect the rotor core loss so then uh, so we have uh, we can uh, we have seen that uh, the uh, performance of this induction motor can be and uh, is somehow analogous to that of a transformer that is similar to transformer it is a single pen machine that is in case of transformer we have two winding the primary and the secondary we give supply to the primary and will give a uh, will get a voltage in the secondary by what of magnetic induction and the primary and the secondary are electrically isolated in induction motor also we have got two sets of winding the stator winding and rotor winding which are isolated from each other electrically isolated and from the stator to the rotor the stator is the, the primary to which you will give the supply normally we can also revert the construction so and the rotor is a secondary so from the primary to the secondary the power is transferred by virtue of induction by virtue of the mutual flux by uh, virtue of the coupling by the mutual flux but uh, in case of transformer what is transformed the voltage level and the current level are transformed but in case of uh, induction motor we have seen that voltage level is transformed current level is transformed as well as the frequency is also transformed because the rotor and the stator frequency are different magnitude magnitude are different so if the uh, induction machine transform all the possible electrical quantities that is voltage current and frequency so it is uh, called the generalized transformer 
but uh, remember one thing the voltage the power transfer is basically due to induction between the stator to rotor but the emf which is induced in the induction motor secondary is also a rotational emf in the sense that it is uh, created due to virtue of relay speed difference between the rotating magnetic field and the rotor so it is not a transformer emf because transformer emf is uh, static in it is it is due to the rate of change of flux magnitude with time but uh, here the voltage is induced due to relative motion unless the motion is there there will be no emf induced so it is also a dynamically induced or rotational voltage now when we have defined the two cage uh, two types of winding we can have on the rotor because on the stator we will have regular three phase winding on the stator on the rotor we can have two type of rotor i either a cage rotor or sleeping rotor in a cage rotor basically what we have in the slots we will have bars normally it is the aluminum bar but uh, because uh, <coughs> normally die cast aluminum bar is there which is uh, shorted on both side by end rings uh, normally uh, but however now that copper uh, square cage rotors are also available because uh, now the manufacturing process have been in, uh, improved so welding copper welding was a problem it uh, requires a very high temperature but now it is possible so uh, if we have a normally normal machines what we need to see normally have aluminum winding but if we have copper then advantage is that the size of the machine will be uh, relatively smaller and the efficiency will increase because copper that have is a better conductor but uh, in material what is the material of the you know, conductor basically we have bars which are shorted on both side the advantage of squirrel cage is that the current distribution will uh, the current will distribute itself accordingly the current on the stator so if we adjust to the number of poles for which the stator winding is worn so it uh, as we have seen that this these are that uh, this can be one of the arrangement that is this two conductors will make a turn similarly this two will make a turn and then for the other pole this one and this one then here this is a turn this is a turn so current you can see that here this plus this current is to loop current so this magnitude is large in this two the magnitude is relatively small here it is zero so if we can, can plot like this approximately the distribution will be like this so it is approximately sinusoid i have shown it approximately sinusoid but actually actual distribution will not be exactly sinusoid some step distribution but we know any waveform by fourier analysis can be analyzed into a fundamental and some harmonics so as the harmonics are not uh, magnitude is small and also does not contribute to main torque generation so we will consider the distribution to be sinusoidal and this is the current in the ring in the ring uh, you uh, you can see here it will be zero because this is going to two sides so here it is maximum so this to have 90 degree shift so we have considered only the fundamental component which contributes to the torque and the harmonics in most cases are small and contribute only to secondary effect obviously these effects are considered if when we go for very detailed analysis so this motors uh, this type of uh, winding is called squirrel cage winding and other one what we can have are the slip ring motor slipping winding is basically regular three phase winding which is connected to say, three slip rings and externally shorted 
through uh, brushes. So both have some advantage and disadvantages. The advantage of squirrel cage is that this number of uh, as it is a bar winding, so it itself adjust to, uh, number of poles is adjusted to the whatever be the pole number of the stator. So if, if there is an arrangement for interconnection of the stator winding for two different number of poles, so we can have a pole changing motor. So pole, pole changing motor, if you remember the synchronous speed expression, it depends on pole. So if you change the number of pole for the same frequency, synchronous speed will change. So basic motor speed will change. <coughs> this is very rugged. And uh, desire, there is no <coughs> moving contact in the squirrel cage motor. So there will be uh, no sparking and no uh, friction, flash friction loss. But the disadvantage is that uh, one disadvantage is that it is difficult. This end ring has to be welded to this bar. This welding is difficult and tends to break. So that broken bar is a very common fault of uh, squirrel cage induction motor. Another thing is that once the cage is made, we cannot change the rotor uh, impedance externally. So in case of Slip ring motor, the advantage is that we are, we are shorting the winding externally through the brushes and so we can insert external impedance. So the resistance is inserted and if we insert the resistance actually what is changed is the starting torque. So we can have a high starting torque by inserting resistance and which is cut off after the motor has started. Then we have started explaining the theory of in the induction motor. Now the induction motor theory basically can be explained uh, based on the assumption that first of all we can assume, uh, uh, we have seen that the <coughs> In three phase winding on the stator produces a rotating magnetic field with a constant amplitude. This magnetic field creates a flux. This flux will uh, rotate at the synchronous speed. This flux and the current carried by a particular phase will interact to produce a torque. We can calculate the torque depending uh, considering the current of particular phase and the constant flux and get the magnitude and for the three phases as it is asymmetrical so three phases the total power of torque developed will be three into multiplied by three so if it's eight phase it is multiplied by eight this is uh, or otherwise we can uh, explain the machine operation in this way also that is stator's phase will induce a Each stator uh, carrying a car, car, alternating current will create a pulsating uh, field that uh, interacts with the motor current of the <coughs> particular uh, space, create a torque, and so we can calculate the torque developed by the individual three phases, and that the summation of the torque will be the resultant torque. So ultimately, the magnitude will be uh, the same expression we will get but the first version that is uh, by uh, in which we explain the motor operation for what of the constant flux interaction uh, interaction of the constant flux with the current that is easier to visualize and understand that is the way normally we explain the motor operation Now, one thing we have seen that the in case of transform, when we have uh, considered a transformer, the impedance drop was very small. So basically, the mutual flux was constant. We neglected the drop of the uh, the voltage. Mutual flux was constant. Now, 
in case of induction motor that the proportion of leakage flow because uh, in case of transformer as the uh, we have a core and the iron core and the leakage flux was very small because leakage flux flux will tend to go through the iron core low reluctance path so leakage flux we neglected so we neglected the leakage reactance also but in case of induction motor what happens leakage flux uh, though we compare the induction motor with the transformer and call it a generalized transformer there is a basic difference because here between stator and rotor we have a air gap so air gap means the reluctance is high air gap of induction motor is very small normally for smaller medium range motor it is less than very very less than uh, 1 mm might be 0.3 or 0.35 mm even then to cross that air gap requires a large amount of magnetomotive force so the leakage flux here is no longer negligible it is large compared to that of a transformer <laughs> so we will see that the magnetizing current requirement of a induction motor also is quite large in case of transformer the no load current is some uh, which is mainly the magnetizing current is something like 5 to 4 to 5 percent here it is uh, given in a well-designed motor it is something around 50 percent of the rated current so the drop due to the leakage the uh, leakage reactance drop uh, and the resistance drop is no longer negligible so there will be slight uh, uh, drop so in the mutual flux must the uh, as the drop uh, that is uh, as the drop increases we increase in current so available voltage that is the supply voltage is constant so minus the drop that portion is reducing so that means mutual flux also slightly changes so but however the it has been found that over the entire operating range the change is not more than two to eight percent so for for normal development of the induction machine theory we consider the mutual flux to be constant that is we technically assume that the leakage flux is negative the resultant mutual flux on a constitute a rotating field and it is reasonable to explain operation from this few points so we have defined uh, the quantities that is p is the number of pole pair f is the supply frequency f2 is the frequency of the rotor fr is the rotational frequency np that is the frequency related to the rotor speed n ns is the synchronous speed n is the rotor speed e1 stator induced emf e2 rotor induced emf t1 stator number of turns e2 rotor number of turns s is the slip phi m is the mutual flux and we define this quantity slip was defined as s is equal to ns minus n by ns so it will to f2 by f where a is if the rotor speed is equal to ns into 1 minus s now <laughs> then emf the emf induced in the rotating uh, by the rotating field in the stator phase is given by e1 is equal to 4.44 kw1 t t1 into phi m kw1 is the binding factor for the fundamental now if we neglect the impedance drop then the supply voltage v1 is approximately equal to e1 so uh, from here you can see that if we neglect the impedance drop the flux phi m will depend on the voltage supply voltage and the frequency so phi m depends on the applied voltage and frequency in the rotor phases the same mutual flux induces a emf e2 which is at a frequency sf f2 is equal to at a frequency sf 
So E2 will be 4.44 kW to F2 T2 into 5M. So F2 we can write as SF. So this is 4.44 kW to SF T2 into 5M. Now it is convenient to replace the actual rotor by an equivalent rotor having the same number of turns per phase disposed in the same way. And, uh, and the EMF is in the equivalent rotor phase is given by E2 dash is equal to S in S E1. So the, if we take this S outside and uh, try to find the S E1, in that case E2 dash will be defined as because uh, AWT1 by K2T2 into E1. At standstill, S is equal to 1. So your E2 dash is equal to E1. As sleep is, E2 dash falls to AC2 dash or AC1. And the current, the current uh, now initially. We, if we uh, that EMF induced is SE1, frequency is SF, resistance is R2, and R2 dash and X2 dash is the standstill leakage reactance. So, as we face the leakage reactance will reduce to SX2 dash. So, the your impedance, rotor impedance will be root over of R2 square plus Sx2 square or if we refer to the stator it will be root over of R2 dash square plus S square X2 dash square. So the current will be E2 dash by Z2 dash Z2 dash so it will be SE1 divided by the rotor impedance. So as it is a short circuit circuit, the current will lag E2 dash by pi 2 is equal to this angle, tan inverse of S X2 dash by R2 dash. Now so this uh, we can uh, we will go to the phasor diagram before that. What are the other component? We have, we have compared it to the transformer. So the phase, we will have the same type of phase diagram that here also this is per phase only for a particular phase. This is the flux phi m, the mutual flux. So to create this flux, the stator will take some magnetizing current in phase with the flux and also will take some pore loss component of current to supply the Pole losses. Pole loss means eddy current and east resistors. So basically, magnetizing current, IEM, say, summation of these two components. This IEM, or some books you will say I no load or I zero in material, but, uh, but stick to the uh, nomenclature you have defined. It is not fixed, but we can change, but uh, stick to the nomenclature once you have defined it. So this is the magnetizing component of the current, current uh, that is magnetizing current and the pole loss component of current. Besides that, in this uh, rotor circuit is short circuited, it is carrying a current, say I2 dashed, it is given by the voltage divided by the impedance of the short circuit circuit. So this current, uh, this uh, rotor circuit acts as a solitary. So this current will have a reflection in the primary circuit. So this corresponding current reflection will be minus I2 dash. So the total primary current actually is this IM plus I2 dash. This is I1. So I1 is the current carried by the primary phase. So the induced EMF is in the status of the winding is minus E1. 
so the supply voltage should uh, be equal to the induced kma plus the impedance drop so supply voltage must be equal to v1 must be equal to my induced kma minus c1 plus i1 r1 drop in phase with i1 and i1 x1 drop in quadrature with i1 this is the resistance drop this is the inductance drop so that is primary goal in in the secondary we have the emf which is induced is ac2 so this is the summation of the voltage drop i2 r2 in phase with i2 touched and i2 touched is x2 touched for in quadrature with i2 touched so this is the phasor diagram if you remember the transformer phasor diagram it is very similar to the transformer phasor diagram only the secondary is short circuit so secondary current uh, lacks it uh, secondary for induced emf by the angle tan inverse of s x2 dash by r2 dash where x2 dash is the standstill leakage reactance r2 dash is the resistance of the rotor circuit one minute hello This is the copper loss. This is the present coal loss, and this portion is then the power which is transferred to the secondary. That is the rotor. So the rotor power is minus C one into minus I two dash into cos phi two. Uh, so I E one into I two dash cos phi two. Now E one is One by S E two dash because E two dash was S E two E one into I two dash cos phi two. So E two dash cos phi two is the voltage component. If you uh, see that E two dash cos phi two, E two dash cos phi two is the voltage component. This is angle phi two voltage component along 
the current. So it has two components, this component and this component. So E2 dash cos phi 2 is basically I2 dash R2 dash. So if we replace this, then E2 dash cos phi 2 is I2 dash R2 dash. So your E1 I2 dash cos phi 2 is I2 dash square R2 dash. So this is I2 dash square plus R2 dash is basically the rotor power loss because I2 dash is the rotor current, R2 dash is the rotor resistance. So your P2 is I2 dash square R2 dash by S. So your <coughs> rotor copper loss is equal to S into P2. So your if P2 is, is the rotor power input, then S into P2, that is S is the slip, is equal to <coughs> the rotor copper loss. So you can see that the whatever power is transferred to the rotor, a portion is uh, utilized to supply the rotor copper loss, which will heat up the rotor, its uh, rotor unwinding. So the rest, that is 1 minus S into P2, which does not appear in the <coughs> Weather diagram is basically converted into mechanical power, which uh, it also includes the mechanical losses. So your mechanical power developed, what we uh, define as power, mechanical power developed, EM, is one minus S into P2. So you can uh, have this ratio that is P2 is to PM is to I2 dash uh, square R2 dash is equal to. 1 is to 1 minus s is to s. Now, this ratio is constant. It is a uh, immaterial. Uh, it is not depending uh, dependent on the assumptions of uh, constant flux and uh, neglect, negligible reactance or anything. This, is, uh, this equation is always true. So, from here you can see that smaller the slip, smaller will be the Rotor loss. So it is advantageous to have a small slip, small running slip. So then uh, the next uh, important quantity is the torque. Now the mechanical power developed is PM is equal to 1 minus S into P2, and the motor is running at a speed N is equal to NS into 1 minus S. So the torque is defined by the Power developed by twice pi n because it, uh, this is expressed in RPS. So 1 minus s into p2 by twice pi ns into 1 minus s. So this is p2 by twice pi ns in Newton meter, or it is defined as p2 into synchronous watt. A synchronous watt is defined as the torque which the synchronous uh, torque. At which the synchronous speed of the, at the synchronous speed of the machine, the power developed will be one watt. Torque, which at the synchronous speed of the machine will develop a power of one watt. So sometimes it is uh, expressed in synchronous watt also the torque. The torque depends on the rotor power and also. A rotor input power, which in turn depends on the stator input power. The stator losses are negligible, so basically the torque will depend on the stator input. So, for a, that is the same torque at lower speed, and the same uh, amount of torque at higher speed will require same power. So at lower speed, much power is wasted in the rotor. The mechanical power is small and the efficiency of the machine is poor. So although the torque is produced by a series of conductor carrying pulsating current, but the torque is constant because the, for the polyphase machine, the resultant power is invariant. Now, next, what we will go differ, uh, next day we will go for the equivalent circuit. Now, again, uh, we have uh, we will see that 
basically equivalence circuit is a uh, equivalence uh, representation of the machine with passive elements like inductance resistance etc which will give the same phasor diagram as the phasor diagram what we have developed here now we can see that the phasor diagram is very similar to the transformer so the equivalence circuit of a induction motor is also very similar to the transformer uh, this one is the equivalence circuit of the secondary or the rotor this is the induced tmf this is a resistance this is the uh, leakage reactance and if it was a transformer this portion will be open but as it is shorted so we will short it so this is the second one now so uh, the equivalence circuit we will start in the next class so it will be uh, almost similar to that of the transformer equivalence circuit but uh, before going to the ne next class will, i will take on thursday just these things what i have defined is available in any machines book so you can go through it if there is a div any difficulty you can ask questions on the next class we will go to the equivalence circuit in the next class then the equivalence circuit parameter determination and torque expressions etc okay so i am not uh, going for the no, new uh, new thing today so I'll stop uh, today here so, so we will have next class on the thursday from 3 pm